Right, ladies and gentlemen, hello, welcome tonight. Tonight we are going to be doing some weird stokery stuff. Tonight with the ship, we're going to be doing some boilers, we're going to be doing some other stuff that the stokers like to play with inside a ship. Uh, definitely not my place on a warship, but they're kind of one of those things that needs to kind of be done. So, <clears throat> let us get into it. So, spent a couple of hours looking primarily what this boiler is. And it appears to be, well, I'll show you what we're going to be doing. Close that down. Close down old Jean-Luc Picard and his face palms. We're looking at if this works. Yeah, of course, go over. We're looking at the boiler room by here. The boiler room looks to have two single pass header type marine boilers from Babcock and Wilcox. That appears to be the right boiler, judging by the side profile by here. And also looking at the uptakes coming from here and by here, it does look to be the rise boiler system. If I just drag this over so you can see, that is what we're going for. So, let's get into buildings and boilers. Now, there's two of you in the chat, well, two of you watching. If you can, share this with your friends and family and anyone you know who likes the naval stuff. Because the more in-depth stuff we do, the more videos I do, the more it gets out there, more people come in, more people learn about the internals of warships, which is quite cool. Now I just want to point out one thing before every start everything. This was meant to be episode four of the Raglan building series, or the Abercrombie class building series. However, I was conscious of the timings, and obviously tonight we're starting streaming, so I've had to put off episode three, which is now going to be episode four, because this is a sneak peek of the next video. If I turn these on, I've had to go back through and do all the ribbing make it a bit more, a bit better. So it's got angled decks inside. It's got all the internal gubbins and all that jazz. So that's what we've got. We've got a little matlow inside just to sort of show how big it is. And then we got basically two triple expansion engines that I bought off the internet. All royalty free, so it's all good. And they're in the right position. So, propeller shaft comes out here. Probably go for the gearbox or the reduction gear. And then out to the propeller. And as it looks so far, that is the hull. I've done a little bit more off camera so you can basically make sure it's all nice and groovy. Obviously, it hasn't been smoothed yet, but we will be getting into that. So. Let's get rid of the hull. We don't need to see that. We do not need to see the ribs either. All we need to see is the triple expansion engines. So one there and one there. They look quite good actually, I do think. Indeed. And especially with this ship, nothing really remains at all. Or of M28. Because both wrecks were, de were demolished, I want to say in 1921. Or vaguely around that point. Which is quite sad. But. Can't really do anything about it, unfortunately. Oh yeah. It is one hell of a torpedo blister. So he's a chunky boy. So let's get started with some boilers, shall we? So let's. Close that down. And we're going to go for. Engineering stuff. So the 
Dribble expansion engines can go in there. Let's stick in our first bit and bob, which is going to be the boilers. Now, I've been watching quite a lot of Titanic Honor and Glory over the last couple of hours, seeing the progress of how they've got with their Titanic model. And quite frankly, they are doing pretty well. Obviously, this is not going to be a plug or anything, but if you're interested in Titanic, I recommend going and checking them out. Also, this is not a sponsored ad. <laughs> okay, just to point that one out. But what they seem to be doing is really good. I'm happy to get behind someone who's doing a really, really good rendition of Titanic. I mean, I think everyone, when they were younger, kind of started off with Titanic and became one of those like Titanic nerds. I mean, I was one of those back in the day. But yeah, it's um, it's a good little thing to get into. Get your little fingers and toes into naval history. Because she has one hell of a rabbit hole of things. So let's build that up. And that is the top of the boiler. Uh, no, let's not do that. Instead, we're going to go like that. We're going to extend those. Indeed, it looks. It's huge, but when you actually look at, well, when I was looking at the screenshots they posted of the most recent, oh, what's it called? Because they've rebranded it, they've gone to uh, Titanic Honor and Glory, no, it's not Titanic Honor and Glory, it's Project 401, and they just recently released their demo of 401, and some of the Patreon photos they have are of the ship, well, the current construction of how they're building the ship. So there's a guy, I don't know his name, but at the moment he is going through the ship and basically building it how Harland and Wolf did back in 1912, which I think is pretty impressive. I mean, I would have loved to have done it with this. I might do with version two of Raglan, but um, at the moment, she kind of needs to get done and then we'll do the proper sexy version so you can all like walk around her that would be amazing but I don't think I'm going to be able to get to that point soon which is sad but oh well I'm going to try and make this the home of understanding everything about monitors but I might actually start off with Properly trying to build a ship as it is with M12, well, the M15 class, which will be when the ship's after this. Obviously, I've got to do the Alvand first. The Alvand's coming out first after this. So then get Alvand. And then hopefully, if all goes to plan and this thing gets starts to be. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Wow, fair play. I was looking through the um, so my so my work. They have a Rex database. If you can work out who I work for, jobs are good. But through them, it basically sort of lists all the Rex and what their status is. And my understanding was that Raglan and M twenty eight were destroyed, and it said something about. I want to say 1920 for them too. And it's, so I took it as obviously ships are gone. They're wrecked. They're uh, salvaged. But in that instance, if they're still knocking around, then happy days. Well, obviously, 
if they lasted till 1950, that's really good to know. But unfortunately, the location of those two wrecks, from what I understand and what their location is, it's literally on the entrance to a port, which isn't great. And thus would then mean, obviously, they'd have to be destroyed because, you know, ships going in. It's a very, very shoal area. But nice, that is actually quite cool. I would love to go and actually dive on the racks. I think that'd be pretty cool. But obviously this is a busy shipping channel going into the actual port. So you're probably not gonna be able to get a little rubber dinghy. Well, it's obviously not gonna be a rubber dinghy, but you know what I mean. Get a small boat and go diving. And also for one, I don't actually have a diver's license, so I can't really go diving on a wreck. I was pretty sure you need the Turkish government's permission to go diving on wrecks in that area, I believe. think, I don't know, don't quote me on that. Oh really? Oh excellent. I will... I want to go diving. <laughs> Next holiday, go to Imbros. I'm gonna go diving on Raglan and then 28. I'm not surprised that M28 is in a better condition, or was in a better condition, because Raglan kind of... Well, she took a few hits, but then the 12 pound magazine detonated and she went down, which, if you don't know where the 12 pound mag is, the 12 pound mag is there, which, that detonating, which I'm pretty sure it's centre-lined? Hang on. Yeah, 12, 12 pounder magazines there. That detonating apparently sank the ship quickly, so probably blew out the bottom, screwed up the provision stores and the flower store. That probably also doesn't go well. Explosives, flower store. So, yeah. Not good. But yeah, thank you for letting me know you can actually go diving on them. Oh, I really want to go. I really want to go do it. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Okay. Let's have a look at my theater. Uh, right. Okay. That's interesting. I believe that these are not the right place. I think it should be a bit thinner and then you have the external side bits. Yeah. Okay. So... How is this going to work? There we are. I want to go for that, that, that. Delete those. Oops, that's not what I want to do. Oh, it's done like that. That's annoying. Okay. Scratch that. Go back. I'm gonna have to guess that's a condenser or the water feed. Just want to point out also, I'm not good at engineering, so don't expect a full-on in-depth brief on. Yeah, don't, don't expect an in-depth brief on how these boilers work, because I haven't got Scooby-Doo. I am not an engineer. <laughs> um, all I understand is 
fire, heat water, water go through turbine, turbine t turns shaft, shaft makes ship go newt newt. There we are, technical terms. Um, so, these plans were acquired of Google. Uh, I have a full on collection through my OneNote. Okay. Right, I actually now have a picture of, <laughs> of the boilers. But that's kind of interesting. Uh, diddle 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 diddle. Jackpot. Cool. So yeah, what I was saying was, yeah, it's pretty much the basics, isn't it? <laughs> Stuff goes newt newt because of fire. There we are. That's all my engineering knowledge. <laughs> if it has a crack in it, it's probably a bad thing. <clears throat> but uh, let me just swing this over to you all so you can see this is the type of boiler I'll just swing that back over there swing this back over here that is the actual genuine boiler that they would use so it's a license built version of the Babcock and Wilcox boiler so that's what we're looking for which I think is really cool it's nice to see uh, there is also another version which actually has the plating on the side which we will most likely need because I'm pretty sure you won't really see a boiler knocking around with the sides off because in my very limited knowledge of engineering I'm guessing that that doesn't really work <laughs> uh, but yeah thank you Jay for sorting that one out And actually looking at it, it seems pretty easy. So I believe I was kind of right in the first place. So that one, that one, that one. And I think that over there goes there. Why you do not want to play? So yeah, uh, to be honest, I can't even pronounce your name. Uh, Talt? Tattle? Barkree? I'm going to call you Dave. I'm going to do a jingles thing here and call you Dave. Or actually, what would you like me to call you instead? Because I'm, pre I'm probably sure... I'm pretty sure I'm well renowned for not being able to say people's names or say people's words. Boy, doesn't help I can't speak either. <laughs> That's kind of an issue. It's just weird drovel comes out of my mouth. Uh, okay. Tart. Tart? Yeah, we'll go for that. Tart. So I have the plans for Raglan here in a OneNote document. And these are taken out of, I believe, the, it's a book called Monitors, or the Big Gun Monitors of the Royal Navy. So that's where I've taken it from. Then the hull lines which are these ones here, are for the successor class of the uh, the Lord Clive class. Ah, uh, right, okay. Fair play. That's quite cool. So yeah, these are the Lord Clive class, which are pretty much exactly the same as the Abercrombies. Just have a slightly shoulder draft. So, yeah. And then I've obviously modified them to have the different decks. So, 
deck four, three, two, one. When they load, there we are. So yeah, that's that's kind of how you get hold of them. If you want, drop me an email and I will send you the link, or if I can, I'll send you the actual plans for it. I might even stick them up on my website when the ship is done, just so then you can actually, everyone can grab hold of the plans. Because I'm a firm believer that plans should be readily available for free to any naval or budding naval historian. And it's not cool that they most of them are hidden behind a paywall, but I do not have a say on that. I would rather give you all something that you can actually use, which would be nice. We do not need one of those. Now, I'm also trying to build the ship like you would any normal ship of the era. So as you can probably tell later on with the ribbing and the keel. That's how we're going through it. Working from basically keel up. But also using the ship's exterior, exterior skin, to basically work out how things will fit into the ship. So with the ribbing, because there's over 81 ribs and frames, trust me I know, because at that point there's 81 there, then there's a couple of additional ones that go around the stern and the like the cruiser stern is it cruiser stern? I think it might be a cruiser stern I can't remember, I want to say transom but I know it's definitely not the transom because a transom is the square sterns I'm just so used to still in the navy lingo of QE which is the issue. Because we had a transom. It wasn't called the stern, it was called the transom. So, yeah. Let's bring that forward. Like that. And we're going to bring that in again. Oh, Jesus. Why is that not fucking? Proportion adding, get off. Nope, it's that one, isn't it? There we are. I love it when it does that. It's just like, really? You really want to do that? There we are. Cool. So that is the that sorted. Let's do a little bit of magic. There we are. Obviously, this side's completely different. Let's come to here. It's going to be awkward now, isn't it? Bring it down to the center line. This one, oh, 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 there we are. Cool. Just gonna mirror that. As it's basically it's exactly the same on the other side, obviously, barring a few. Yes, I would love it if someone would actually make a version of the ship so you can walk around it and have it on display in, say, for instance, Portsmouth or any other dockyard that has a. You know, what was I was gonna say that was it. It'd be amazing to see any ship of this era, like something unique like this, you know, be on display for people because it's a really interesting part of naval history. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're the type of ship that even its mother might not love, but I just love them. They just Beautiful ships. I know loads of people who would disagree with me on that one, but 
they are beautiful, beautiful ships. And um, me and a guy called Jay on my Discord server, who actually is, he helps out quite a lot. He sometimes provides me with the plans of the ships that I'm doing, or he goes out and finds images of the ships for me. And I kind of use them as a research tool. So Jay, if you're out there and you're listening, just so you know, I do appreciate everything you do for this. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's nice to yeah have someone to help. What the hell was I saying? <laughs> See, this is the problem. I always go off on tangents, and I can't remember what the bloody hell I was saying. Say something about only a mother would love it. Wasn't I? <laughs> so, yeah. Now, it looks to be the entire trunking goes through the entire section. So that's fine. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Jay's a good guy. Appreciate everything you do, mate. Bring it slightly further out. Because down by here, there is a section that sticks out. Hmm. Okay, now. Uh, that section there will need to stick out slightly. Cool. That looks alright. Looks good. Now let's mirror this. So everything we do on one side is exactly the same on the other. You are kind of one of the minority people who actually really likes the look of these ships. <laughs> Lots of people hate them. Just based off the fact that, you know, they're they're not the world's most elegant looking things. Like look at the look at the whole shape on that. I think I quote my girlfriend in saying it is fugly. <laughs> but I mean don't get me wrong. I'm the type of person who likes the TOG2 tank. <laughs> I'm probably famous for liking ships that are a little bit quirky, a little bit ugly, but truth be told, that might put me in a minority, but it just means I have a bit of class. <laughs> I mean, I want these types of people who loves the look of HMS Bristol. Loads of people hate the look of Bristol. Bristol Apparently, in most people's eyes, is an ugly ship. I do like the Bristol. She's beautiful. And the same thing with these. People hate the look of these things. They think, Christ, look at the beam on that. That is ugly as hell. And there's nothing on the upper works. There's nothing. It's just a gun with a tripod. And yes, it is just a gun with a tripod and a big, massive bulge. But it has character. It has style. It's just, ah, beautiful. She's magnificent. And it's a part of naval history that people seem to forget that, you know, with these, these ships, these ships exactly, the story behind the reason why these ships exist is, one, through innovation, two, because obviously they had some guns lying around, and... Churchill wanted some guns, and three, you just, they're just, oh, they're just beautiful. I love these ships. 
I really do. And they don't get as much love as they should do. So, yeah. We are in the minority, Tate. We are in the minority. But we're in the good minority. Remember that. And lucky enough, Jay also has the same opinion that we do. That these ships are beautiful looking. So, yeah, all you anti-monitor people. You can shove your pulses up your ass. Because <laughs> I take one of these every day. Uh, let's get rid of the triple expansion engines. We don't really need them at the moment. Uh, da, 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 da. There we are. Cool. Uh, okay, here we go. So that's that's an issue. Need to cut across that. Or bisect it. There we are. <clears throat> it's quite amazing to me that how the Battle of Imbros was actually fought and how it was one of the last naval combat, well, naval battles of the First World War. And weirdly like Coronel, it's one of those battles that everyone forgets about. And yes, obviously it's a bit... It's, it's not great knowing how many people died in the battle, but there is also a bit of comedy behind it of how well, I don't want to say ineptitude on the Ottoman Empire's you know, operation of well, basically Goebel and Breslau. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the the Turkish pronunciations for them because I know I'll butcher it. And that's not really what I want to do. I think it was Yavaz Sultan Salim and the oh, Mildru? It's not even that, is it? It's something along those lines. But, yeah. It's, it's just sad knowing that, you know, not many people actually know of it. And the ones who do, well, definitely in the minority. <laughs> definitely in the minority. But, we don't really need to be in the minority. Because my personal plan I want to do is teach the world about the Battle of Imbros. The stories of how Breslau and Goban went out to attack a British... Well, there's meant to be a bunch of pre-dreadnoughts. Uh, Ark Royal, the seaplane carrier. Obviously, M28, Raglan. The Lizard and another destroyer off the top of my head, I can't remember what her name is. Yeah, that's that's fair enough, exactly. I mean it's a very, very, very inherent thing with navies. It's trying to find enough people to man a ship or find enough people who actually understand what the hell's going on. I mean hell just look at some of modern day navies you'd be hard pressed to find someone who actually completely 125% knows what the hell they're doing uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. okay I need to do something here so Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so. This is not how you meant to do it. But, shh! You didn't see me do this. Okay. Right. 
Right. Yes, I I have heard Breslor is diveable. <clears throat> I have actually tried to find her on uh, the Rex database. It's one of those ships that's like, ooh, I wouldn't mind having a look at and seeing what she actually looks like. Because, I mean, since I found out about Raglan, and because if you don't know, I'm actually generally yeah, from the village of Raglan in South Wales, so that's kind of how I know about Hedgeworth Raglan. And it was literally off a random wiki, like, Google of, hmm, does Raglan actually have a ship? Long and behold, there was a few. One called Raglan, the other's called a Raglan Castle, and there's a couple of merchant ships called Raglan. Ah, yes. That's understandable. It's weird, though, that Breslau, well, Breslau, Breslau, it's, um, it's weird how she's technically classified as a war grave, but then Raglan and M28 are like, nah, it's fine, don't worry about them, they're just a bunch of shipwrecks, it's fine, don't worry about it. And it's like, well, if you think about it, loads of people died on board, technically they're war graves, but, you know, you know what, whatever you want to do, okay. So yeah. That's kind of annoying. Um, Vex mis mistaken. Uh, whatever happened to those Minecraft tutorials? Uh, I stopped them. One, because all the guys on board ship found out that I did them. And then got bullied and crucified to an inch of my life, so I stopped them. After I stopped it, they continued taking the piss. So I then deleted it. And all of them went. That is where they all went, unfortunately. Um, yeah, sorry. That's what happened. Very unfortunate, but I know many people liked them, but unfortunately I had to do what was probably best for myself at that point. And unfortunately, ignoring it was not an option. I kind of had to make action on that and yeah, that is, that is that. Like, hmm. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing. It's just, it's a bit shit how they just go around and delete ships, scrap them, when in reality, you know, it's like loads of people died on board, and you know, they have the history of, you know, being part of a big massive conflict, and yes, obviously some people can make the thing of, oh well, it was a good idea they scrapped them because they were pre-atomic steel and all that jazz, but even still. It's not, it's not cool. And unfortunately, unfortunately, was it really worth it? That's the thing. Was it really worth scrapping the ships? Oh dear, that was a bad idea. Actually, how many things is there? Three. There's three cuts in the center. They just go one there, one there, one there, and then you just bring these out slightly. 
keep falling into that that old little thing I used to do of. So, if those who don't know, because I know there's a quite a few people have actually joined this YouTube channel since I uh, decided to quintessentially shit can my last YouTube channel. I used to do used to build chips in Minecraft, then teach you how to build them, and it I, I sometimes fall into the thing of oh you do this then you do this then you do this which is yeah it's a it's a weird feeling to get back into but I you know trying to stay away from that because that's not what obviously the channel's around it's around naval history instead of making ships in Minecraft and then telling, teaching you how to build them but don't get me wrong, it was good fun to do it back in the day. I um, ended up building a QE, the uh, Queen Elizabeth and the Prince of Wales. That was quite cool. Probably the best ones you'll ever find. <laughs> Just because, well, you know, take it from the horse's mouth if I was there. I'd, you know, I'd diss them when I was on board and I used mental images in my head of areas. And I could literally walk to the areas of the ship. Which was cool. Right, that is pretty much that done. Let's get rid of those because we don't need to see them. I've done it twice. <laughs> I built Minecraft. Ah, built Minecraft? Yeah. I'm the I'm the head of Mojang. <laughs> no, the um I I built two versions of mine of this ship in Minecraft back in the day. So once I did it, and I thought it was great, and then I came across some more plans and I went, actually, that's wrong. That's very wrong. Um, whole form was completely wrong because the bow is meant to be a very bluff. Well, I actually made it look like a cruiser bow. Uh, <laughs> And I had big massive cuts out for a high angle four inch mount, like you see on the, I want to say Emerald class of light cruiser. It was that type of mount. <laughs> so not good. Then I built a new one, which I thought was a lot better. It looked better. However, there was a part in the back of my mind that was going this is incorrect <laughs> and yes of course it's it wasn't perfect but it was nice to look at then obviously I've come a little bit further on from building ships out of blocks to building ships out of well literally blocks that I can now manipulate into any shape I want so I've come quite far you would say, but the uh, yeah, it's um, it's one of those. Right, let's make the stoke holes. I think they're called stoke holes. I haven't got a clue. Um, yeah, let's just have a quick little read of your. Uh, Past comment. Uh, look this up on YouTube. I will have a look at that and have a look. Okay, I see what you mean. Little shorts. Okay, all right. I'll keep that open for later on. But yeah, that's uh, that's my little story of Raglan's. Um, I did at one point try and build an M twenty eight uh, M thirty three. However, Minecraft was very much not the thing to do it in. <laughs> that I soon realised. So yeah, 
good fun. <laughs> uh, has. Oh, actually. These aren't circular like the Titanics. These are actually square. Interesting. I'm going to hazard a guess. That is... 30 centimeters wide. Yeah. So 0 0.3 wide. Uh, that's going to be 0 0.1. No, 0 0.03 a push and we're looking at 0 0.15 I think we need to bring Kevin down as well Kevin Kevin those that don't know Kevin is my Matlow on the upper deck Occasionally bring him down just to see if things are the right shape, right height or not. Right, there we are. That's actually quite a big boiler when you look at it in comparison to a 1.62 metre tall bloke, which was the average height for a gentleman back in 1914. But for the people who were born, who would have been 19 in 1914. That was the average height. So, yeah, that's uh, that's that. Right, where is my little cube? Christ, that's kind of small, isn't it? I want to say that's bigger. Much bigger. So shall we say, uh, 0 0.3 tall as well, more of a square. Yeah, but 0 0.3 is about the size of a ruler, 0 0.45, 0 0.45, that's almost half a meter wide. I don't reckon there's, they're about half a meter wide, though. Hmm. Um. Zero point four. By zero point four. And then the center of them. Yep. There we are. Like that. Then it appears to be uh, there's a few little bits and bobs on the sides. Which I can't actually tell what the hell those are, so. How many do you reckon are along the side of that? Because that boiler is, what, 6.54 meters wide. Which is quite sizable. Um. I'm also just having a quick little look at this because there is also a couple of little bits and bobs that might also need to be sorted out because this point here this point here needs to be changed ever so slightly do we do it from there? 
or there. And by the way, yes, I have screwed up. Merge at the last. Uh, hang on a second. Uh, I've seen what I've done. We'll do that. We'll mirror it again. Cheap way of doing it. For those of you who are wondering, uh, tonight's drink of choice is Copperberg's Cherry Rum and Cola. It's a very good drink. And it's only 5%, believe it or not, for uh, alcohol, especially with the rum variety. Now, how many would there be? So this would be about one meter wide. Oh, shoot. Okay, let's have a look. Those are slightly different, but oh well. Oh, Jesus Christ. Bad idea. However, that's how it's meant to go. So we're probably looking at that. Drag that that way. And then we're going to go... No, don't do the... Level, do the array. We're going to do something called array. Do one, two, three, increase the factor by two. We'll do a minus two. Is there a one down the center? Possibly. Hmm. I'll say three each side. So bring that down to three. And we're just going to join those up to that. Oh dear. Bad idea. Bad idea. Oh, of course, it's being like that. There we are. Oi! Where's my stuff gone? Apply. There we are. Stupid play thing. However, the mirrors, the mirroring is not working. Why are you not working? That's strange. I know why, because it's disengaged the uh, mirror. Ladies and gentlemen, if you experience slight issue with uh, YouTube, I do apologize because that is YouTube being YouTube and not playing ball when it comes to live streaming. So I do apologize if you experience a little bit of buffering over the hour mark, okay? Okay, so let's bring up the mirror tool again. 
There we are. We now actually have some doors. Now. Here we go. This is going to be the fun. Let's bring that down to amidships. Delete that because we don't really need it. It's hold over from what we had earlier on. Then we're going to bring that one. For there, that one to there. Uh, oh, here we go. This is going to be the problem now, isn't it? I'm gonna have to hand do this. Like that. We can obviously wiggle them left and right. Obviously, this is going to be very rough. Okay. Just because, personally, you're not really going to see this unless you actually go inside the ship and, well, have a look. Now we're going to have one. Direct down the center. That's not straight. Slightly off. Right, uh, top. We are looking at the X value. Cool, okay. So now, Time to make these slightly wider. And this one gets put by there. This one can go by there, roughly. How does that look? Yeah, it looks about right. And now, we'll go to there. Okay. Right. We now have one boiler in place. Now, let's put in the trunking, or the uptakes. This is one of those key parts of a ship. Cool, right. So, we're looking for a cube. It's gonna go to there. Now what I'm going to do with this, I'm not actually going to properly attach it to the boiler itself, because this is going to be a secondary section to it. But what I can do is make it the right size. So like that. Bring those down. So you have that one there. You have that one there. Now this is where the fun begins because obviously the uptakes are quite large on the ship. Or well, relatively speaking for the size of the ship, they are quite large. So that's how big it is. And now, for the effect of it, we go into there, we will extend that down for exercise so it actually looks like it's properly meant to be like that.
probably need to bring that that way. And we're just gonna bring that one down. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Let's just bring those down so it looks a bit more. There we are. So yeah, funnel trunking. Looking forward to this. Don't think I've ever was thought I would ever say that, but yeah. Looking forward to the funnel trunking. Okay, so there's that. That gets brought to there. Now. <laughs> now, this is where the fun begins. So I kind of need to, I need to copy and paste this, this that way, don't I? Oh god, right. I think I'm happy with the boiler so far. Obviously, if I'm not, I'm just gonna delete it and then, but cut half, cut it in half. Delete all the one side, change it up, and then carry on. So yeah. Right. So now, let's look at that. Yeah, it looks alright. Needs to be a bit of a darkish shade though. So we might just load up the good old paint soon. And then play with it. Let's add some piping. So the piping I think the piping's more on the port side of it. How is everyone going? I know where the chat's a bit quiet, but how's everyone doing? You all okay? Oh, you're probably bored of hearing me talk. <laughs> but we've got seven viewers, which I think might just be a record for people actually watching. 11 likes, well done. If you haven't liked it already, please like the video. There's six people here. Please give it a like, you know, do the weird YouTube algorithm stuff. And yeah, if you want to talk about anything, let me know. Bring up a conversation, bring up a topic happy for whatever because oh really nice what should you doing is it a custom or is it a uh, real well yeah is it real or is it custom Three ds max oh well kudos well done she is one hell of a ship to do. I mean, don't tell anyone this. But I am trying to. Pl I'm planning on doing one of the Invincible class carriers. Uh, well, when I say one of them, I mean kind of all of them. So I'm uh, planning on doing Illustrious when she went to the Falklands. Then I'm going to do Arc Royal, Illustrious, and all that jazz. So, shh, don't tell anyone. But uh, which? Oh, do you? Ooh, nice. 
that'd be quite cool. I think I can grab hold. I think I can grab hold of the plans for the illustrious and those ships. I think I know a man. But I really fancy at some point doing the CVA zero ones. I know there's plans out there. I've seen the plans, but they are uber duper expensive. They're like a thousand pound overall just to have, I think it's all four plans, all five plans, I think. It's ridiculous money, but I'm tempted if my channel hits 500,000 subscribers, I might do a CVA01. <laughs> Just have a rod and have a with, you know. Mm. Wait, what? Yes. Yes. That's where they are. They are ridiculous money, but that's my plan that, you know, if I make it big on the YouTubes, I do plan on doing a CVA01. Because I. I weirdly love the CVA-01 design. It's just such a unique and weird design. But then again, I am the type of guy who does love the Malta. So, yeah. But can you imagine CVA-01 operating Phantoms and Buccaneers and Gannets, Sea Kings? Oh, I mean, I hate the, I hate the Fleet Arrow just because you know, I was a gen, I was an electronic warfare rating in the RN. Ah. Are you doing it for, uh, War Thunder? Because that would be amazing. I'd, I'd like to stick this into War Thunder, but Oh, DCS. Ooh. That's cool. That is very cool. Do you have photos of your Hermes? By chance. I wouldn't mind having a look and seeing... Seeing it. If that's okay by you. Great. Um, do you have Discord or what do you have? Because I genuinely love to see this. So I do have a soft. I do have that soft spot for Hermes. She's just such a beautiful carrier. Are you doing her Falklands con configuration or are you doing her as angled flight deck cats and traps carrier? All three, Jesus. Wow. Dude. I like your style. That is good. Which one's your favourite? Just out of curiosity. You a man of the Harry or you are the man of the... Uh... Of cats and traps. Hello, Hyperdog. Nice. I I'm a fan of the Cats and Traps version. They're just so much better looking. <laughs> Plus they're more capable. Oh <laughs> That'd be sick. I like it. Oh, I'd love to. I really would love <laughs> to have a Hermes. It's just, you know, it's a bit, a bit of a shame that they scrapped it, but yeah, that would be cool, mate. Good luck. Uh, 
it's always a good thing to bring up about you know aircraft carriers and other little bits and bobs about history and what ifs. I love the little what if of you know if we had CVA zero one, would the RGs have invaded the uh, Falklands? I just love the uh, love the alternate history. Alt history is like cool, <laughs> but then it's a good idea to not fall down the rabbit hole of the random crap that some people come out with. Like, oh yes, of course, you know, Invincible was sunk because of blah 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 blah, and it's like, mm, was it? Stop reading the propaganda. But then the also the other side of it is it's like, ooh, but what if she was sunk? How would we play that? <laughs> like, how how would it have affected us? Obviously it wouldn't have affected us that much because apparently the, uh, the Americans were going to give us a carrier anyway. <laughs> but, you know, the, there is that thing of, ooh, but what if? I love the what if questions. What if questions are amazing? They're like... They're just like chocolate. Chocolate's amazing. The more you have, the more you feel good. But then also on the other side of it, the more you feel dirty because you're eating so much chocolate. Same thing with alternate history questions. The more you go down the rabbit hole, the better you feel, but also the more you're like, Christ, <laughs> what the hell has happened? So, <laughs> yeah. I sound like a madman. There we are. I kind of forgot the support. Well, that's very true. <laughs> they better give us something in return. <laughs> um, no, we don't need one on the back. It's very, very limited space. Be interesting to actually see a three-dimensional model of Victorious with the cats and traps and all that stuff. That'd be quite cool to see. Sorry, my chair's a bit squeaky. I'd love to see a cats and traps 3D model of Victorious. Just to sort of see. I know, obviously, I've seen pictures of her with the amazing dustbin radar on top, but. Oh, just imagine just seeing that ship. Just, it'd be amazing. To be fair, actually, thinking about it, I wouldn't mind seeing the... So I've just... I've literally just watched... Uh, or I've read... Actually, can I say read? More like I have listened to Phoenix Squadron by, uh, I can't remember his name, but it's basically about, if you don't know, the Buccaneer Squadron on board Ark Royal. Yeah. I really want to do a CVA-01. Oh, it'd be so good. But yeah, it's, it's about... The Phantom and Buccaneer Squadrons attached to HMS Ark Royal during the nineteen well the early nineteen seventies and how the Buccaneers sort of kind of avoided the Guatemalans from invading Belize by just basically doing a flyover. <laughs> just kinda cool. Not gonna lie, I don't have any more photos of the boilers. So I'm literally just gonna have to do that, that, and of course I can't do that because they're both these, aren't they? Have it to mesh, plonk that in, jobs are good. Yeah, good book. Obviously I was explaining what it was to other people who haven't read the book yet. Or listened to it on Audible. 
which I highly recommend if anyone wants to read or listen to a decent book Phoenix Squadron is a very good book to read I mean personally I'm not a fan of the Fleet Air Arm because as I said I was a warfare specialist not a wafu so yeah but I did highly enjoy that book that book was really good And it weirdly made me love the Buccaneer and the Phantom a lot more. So, I mean, personally, if they can do that and make me like it, then happy days. Okay, so now here we go. So. Yeah, Buck is a good plane. It's gone the one eight zero. Uh, are we touching tips? No, we're not. Not yet. However. Nope. Uh, cube number one. Come down here. You two can get joined together into the uptakes. <laughs> That's to me. You know, a, you know, the Buck is a very good aircraft. When they literally ended service not that long ago. I think actually the Buccaneer was probably the first airplane I made in Minecraft back in the day before I thought the F-69 from Saints Row 3 was a good airplane. <laughs> oh god. Back in the day. Hello, David Cameron. David Cameron, you are a watcher of Drakenefell, aren't you? Because I vaguely remember your name. I think you've been here for a very long time. But you actually... You asked him a question on the most recent Patreon dry dock, or is the live stream? Before you ask, no, I'm not stalking you. <laughs> I have. N I think I have seen your buccaneer, yes. Vaguely remember it. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. Uh, this model one. Is so the exterior will be for a 3D to be 3D printed so I can make a th one 350 scale model of it. The internals I'm currently doing right now are for screenshots, imagery of the ship being built for myself, but also for Drakinafel when he does a special spoiler alert on monitors later on in this year. But the screenshots are also for me for talks I'm giving on Hater of Raglan and the Abercrombie class. Also for my video on the ships, which is going to be the first proper new brief coming out. Just need to finish the ship. And this is also in the build series. So sometimes it's a live stream, sometimes it's an actual uploaded video. Granted, the last video I did wasn't a good idea. Oh really? Wow. Well done. Welcome my friend. So great to see another 3D modeler has joined the Discord.
Looks good. Cool. Have I just killed David Cameron? <laughs> Has Cameron left? Don't run away. Come back. We're all friends here. Now, these. Here we go. This is where it gets fun. I need deck three. No, deck three is. Oh, really? Christ, thank you. Wait, I don't really do much on Twitter. I used to do a load of OSINT stuff. You know, fighting those fighting those Russians. <laughs> but thank you. I do post the occasional like sneak peek of these of what I've been doing on there, but also mainly through the Discord, through the uh, James's Productions. Which has a thread underneath it, which is HMS Raglan, which you then see all the images I do it and post in there. And I do try to have people talk about it in there, but we haven't really got around to that point yet. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's kind of how it's going. Uh, let's not do that. Those two, those two, those two, and those two. Possibly two deck might be the thing I need to do. <sighs> yeah, I thought it was you. Because <laughs> I was watching it, I was like, I remember Drac saying, Oh, yeah, David Cameron. I can't remember what you, you said. And I thought, Hang on, I know a David Cameron. Obviously not the Prime Minister, ex-Prime Minister, I should say. Uh, but yeah, it's like, hmm, recognise that name. <laughs> but it's cool, I, it's you. Happy days. I'm glad you have a good taste in uh, YouTubers. <laughs> oh dear. Three pounder sub caliber gun stowed. Oh, these are the three pounders in here. Wash. Hatch. Galley. Blah, 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 blah. Cool. Roger. Cool. And by the way, if anyone asks, yes. I am doing everything in here. <laughs> so all these little odd bits and bobs, they will be happening in there. They're going to be done. So just to point out. So looking forward to getting this done. Really looking forward to it. Yes, stop chatting and actually get this stuff done. Uh, hmm. Okay. So it looks to be at this stage. It gets thinner. That's fine. All we need to do is do that. Oh, wow. That's quite cool, actually. We're talking arc as in ah, the OG arc. The good arc. The sexy, fl sexy one that flies buccaneers and phantoms. The good arc royal. The one that took 12 years to bloody build. Uh, is that the internal parts? Yes, it is. Christ. That's not good. Cool, there we go. What the bloody hell has happened there? Oh, shoot. Those should not be like that. Mr. Potter. 
So screw it up. Right. It should only be that. That is the only thing that should be going amidships. Christ, we've got nine viewers. Hello, all new viewers. Hello. Be quite interested to actually know, are you all new viewers? Well, all you new viewers, are you 10 people? Jesus Christ, hello. Are you all normal YouTube followers? Or are you both, or are you all just randomly found this on the internet? Just to get out of curiosity. I'd like to know. You know, just to sort of see how far my uh, presence goes. Hmm. I have a sneaking suspicion that that should not be that thick. Yeah, these need to be brought in considerably. Those ones need to be brought in. Those need to be brought in. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, I used to watch my channel a few years back. Back in the day. Obviously now times have definitely changed. Um, <laughs> well, a lot has changed since back in the day. But yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised, to be perfectly honest. But. Yeah, that's cool. Happy days. Nice. Right. Now, who wants a sneak peek of exactly what the hell this looks like with the ship? Hello, Aidan Murphy. I recognise your name. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you know, <laughs> these things happen, I guess. <laughs> Just glad you're out along for the ride. Uh, the bilge cutouts keep. What the hell that for? Um. Oh, I know what that was for. Do, 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 do. Sneak peek for you. Wall. That, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, is how large the boiler is on board an Abercrombie class monitor and you can kind of see exactly how close or how far away the armoured belt is. Oh fair play. That's probably the reason why I recognise your name. What was I doing back in 2019? I think I started the channel in 2019. I was deploying to America yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> Fair play. Stick the triple expansion engines. Uh, triple expansion engines in. There we are. Obviously, need to colour these to make them look like they're meant to be what they're meant to be. But from the side profile. The boilers are a lot bigger than the engines. <laughs> that is quite cool, actually. And just to reiterate, I bought these triple expansion engines off the internet. So these aren't mine, these are just ones I bought for 8 quid. And they look pretty good, actually. So, yeah.
So now we just got some boilers. Boilers, boilers are in place. Now I can do the cutouts around these ribs when it comes to technically episode four of the build series on Raglan. So we'll get to that at some point. So yeah, that's how it's going. Obviously very low poly, you know, not putting rivets on this, just, you know, as it's meant to sort of look, okay? Do I need that still or not? It's technically on this deck, you don't need it. Just need the bulkheads. But we're just gonna quickly, you know, fly around this thing for a little, for a couple of minutes while I, you know, don't lose my head, don't lose my mind over building a boiler. Um, and just have a look at the weird overall design of this ship because they are weird as you can tell with you know super duper bulges and stuff and how hey James how's it going man why are you not cadets <laughs> the moderator has arrived for now James, you're a stoker. I've got some engines. And I've got some boilers. Look at me. I'm turning into a stoker. And I know how they work. Ish. <laughs> oh, dear. Really? You finished it? Christ, that was early. Well, fair play. Do you enjoy it? It's not really a cath well, yeah, it kind of is. It's huge. And you got the bilge down here. This is technically the tank top. Ah, I see. So yeah, so I'll give you a quick little overview of how an Abercrombie is made up. You have the big massive torpedo bulge. In here is watertight compartments. Then this section by here is open to the water. <laughs> Not surprised you found the bar. And then by here, especially within the area of the boilers, is the coal bunkers. Then you have a two inch belt. Well, it's more like two inches of sloped deck armor. But there. So one could say that this is literally a protected cruiser with a dual 14 inch gun turret. Such fun. It's good fun, I guess. <laughs> right, so now I need your help, James. As your stoker, I've done the boilers, I've done the engines. What other things usually go into a ship whilst it's being built that are stokery? Obviously, can't put the prop shafts in yet, but the prop shafts will be added very soon. Because if I show you, we have the hull form, because I am still technically working on the hull form at the moment. The props. <gasps> the props are slightly off. Uh, need to work on the shaft. <laughs> that does not sound great, does it? <laughs> I need to work on the shaft. <laughs> um, where is where's the shaft end? There it is. Christ, look at the amount of mesh on that. God. That is a lot. Mm. 
What's that? Uh, all pipe works and motor pumps. Okay. Anything too big to chain block down. Right, okay. Now, from what I under also understand about ships... Oh, shoot, don't do that. Is prop shafts are not straight. They're angled. Like that. They also go for a reduction gear, don't they? Also, that is literally getting shoved in there. There we are. Yeah. See, I know stokery stuff. Uh, the reduction gear is located about here. Reduction gear is about here. That rhymes. Uh, so. Okay, so it's basically a gearbox. The gearbox is there. The internal plans... I ditched that. Um, ditch those. The plans are provided by Google. Well, on Google. And I have plans for each deck. The bulkheads and all that jazz. That is pretty much how she looks. There's a shape on one deck, two deck, three deck, and four deck, which is also technically called the tank top. So, yeah. Uh, diddle diddle, all shafts work too up towards the stern seal. Okay. So, yeah, that's there. So, what I'm looking at then is by there is the gearbox. Would you say that's the gearbox or not? Also, cheeky, shaft passage. <laughs> I love the propellers on this thing. They're so tiny. It's like a baby Titanic. With some really, 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 really weird rudders. Also, if you notice, that's where the end of the main armoured belt goes or the armoured deck then you have a 4 inch thick bulkhead then 1.5 inches of deck to here where it then slopes down over the steerage compartment which is quite cool there's also 2 inches of deck armour over the top 8 inches around the turret barbette 2 inches below the barbette itself 10 inches on the face, 4 inches on the roof, 7 inches on the back, then you have a 6 inch conning tower, and then you have 2 inches of deck to there, 4 inches of bulkhead armour, which is only one deck thick, because then you have everything behind that. That's kind of how they, uh, they look, which is groovy and nice. There's vents there, one on each side, so it's one port, one starboard? Yeah. Interesting. Um, also, two generators in the auxiliary machinery space. Switchboard. I need some good pictures of a switchboard. But switchboard will probably be lowered into place afterwards. I'm guessing. Let's have a look at what 
15 naval switchboards look like? Do you really want a switchboard looks like? I don't know. I don't think that's the right switchboard. I think that's giving me a phone switchboard. Which... Um... Yeah. That's not the switchboard you're looking for. Very similar to these aren't the droids you're looking for, but... Yes, these aren't the switchboards you're looking for. Oh god, I don't think... Yes. It's nice to see they actually have pumps on board, which means they can definitely uh, pump water off the side. There's a feed tank there as well. Which I'm guessing is going to be water? And then you have... Yeah, we'll just... We will stick that in as a gearbox. Or as the thrust bearing. I need a stoker's visit idea. Also, I have no idea how to do a generator. <laughs> what do you think I built bought those? Okay. Um, uh, 1915 DC naval switchboard. Power switchboard. That's not what I'm looking for, but... Yeah, that's, um... Uh, yeah, that is not what you're looking for. Strange. Yeah. Happy days. That's where those pipes go to. Literally. Okay, so I now need to bring that up to the rough deck level. Like, sure. Over to there. Bring that down to there. Oh dear, that's not what you want to do. And we'll go for there. Boom, sorted. Now I just need to make it thinner. <laughs> That prop shaft isn't that straight, is it? Christ. It's like that prop shaft went out on the piss and got absolutely shit-faced. Well, go to there. And I just need to adjust my shot. <sighs> I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. <laughs> as much as I was about to say it, I'm not saying it. Were well, you dirty, filthy weirdos out there? I am not saying what I was going to say. My opinion is, I believe this would have been green. I don't know why, I just think this would be green. I 
actually genuinely tried to build this in Stormworks at one point. There we are. Steam reciprocating engine. Let's have a look. See if there's any uh, steam. Let's have a look. Is there any three dimensional steam reciprocating engines? And primarily not the ones that look like a tractor. I mean, yes, they're quite cool, but I don't think they're the ones I need. Um, bum, 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 bum. That's a that's the wrong type of engine. That's the one I've already got. That's Titanic's reciprocating engine. As much as I like it, I don't think it's going to fit inside this ship. That's also a triple expansion engine. Can't really use that either. Uh, unless it's a geared steam set, well. So the main engine is the right size. So that is the perfect size for that engine there. Okay. Let's hide that. We don't need it. I reckon we could probably build a very, very basic version of that. Yeah, we can we can do that. And then if it if push comes to shove and we end up properly doing this ship like they're doing with Titanic in Titanic Project well Project 401. Yeah. We'll change it up. But until then I need to I don't know exactly the size of that. We're just going for that. So that's gonna be the gearbox with a question mark on the end of it let's build ourselves one of those did I put in a circle hang on what's that cube cube zero one is a gearbox where is Oh dear. That's the funnel trunking. There we go. Okay. I have not a clue. I don't think so. James, do ships have clutches? I don't. I'm pretty sure they don't. But I, now I'm actually genuinely curious as well. So thank you for sparking my interest. <laughs> oh dear. Bit of a random question, isn't it? But it's a good question, nonetheless. Okay. We need to subdivide this by two. Bingo. Uh, that makes me move further that way. Yep, cool. Right. Drag this that way. Okay, cool.
voila. Okay, right, let's bring that slightly over there. That needs to go slightly there. Okay. Now, I guess there. Uh, here we go. Some do to add our auxiliaries from the main shaft. Fair enough. Sounds cool. Thank you for uh, for letting me know. Where's the doodad that goes up? It's in line with that one over there. Okay, so there. Make it straight. There we are. Okay, here we go. No. Let's not do that. That will be the better option. So there. That line goes backwards like that. Kind of does, doesn't it? It's it's very strange. I'm gonna guess that this bit by here is cut out to let that spin. Also, while we're here. don't think they're going to be this curvy, but let's just stick it in just in case. There we are. I'm going to bring that one out. Yeah, there is definitely a flywheel in there, so we'll need to make sure I have got enough room for the flywheel. Okay, let's change these up. So these need to be a bit more curvy. Shade that. There we are. Cool. So now, how does that fit in with the whole form? Whole form is there. It should be one of these. Okay, weirdly it's slightly higher, but that is down to the fact that we need to put the deck in underneath. Which is fine. I can do that later on. Let's ditch that. And let's build that up. Um, that angle is wrong. There we are. Cool. Uh, why? There we are. That. That should be it. Now let's move into the fun and games of this bit that I honestly have no idea about. But I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so. Let's go down to here. Uh, 
Oh, uh, here we go. That's awkward. These two need to go back to here. These two need to go down to here. Great. No worries. Well, thank you very much for uh, coming along. It's a pleasure having you here. And I hope to see you more in the future. I'm glad I have sparked your interest in ships again. That is kind of the primary role of the channel. Make sure people actually you know, have an interest in ships, these ships now. Because ships are cool. Doesn't matter what people say, ships are cool. And thing is, ships are cool, but only people who understand them properly will be able to appreciate the knowledge that comes from it. I mean, some civvies will be able to understand, and well, unfortunately some people, even in the military, will never understand ships like some others will. And that is why I probably didn't get along with anyone really in the military because my passion for ships was a lot more than what uh, what people what anyone else's was. Most likely. I don't know exactly what type it would have been, but yeah, if I can crack out a decent rendition of it, then we should be laughing. Pretty much. Yes, I do feel the same way. And then the ones that actually genuinely love it are the ones they get shat on. But, oh well. As some of them might say, you can't take a joke Shouldn't have joined the British military. I reckon it'd be something like that. This bit I am actually YOLOing, okay? I don't exactly have plans for this section, however I'm putting in a placeholder just in case. So I'm going to hazard a guess. That is a flywheel. That is a centralised like support. So you probably have support, flywheel, something else. Motor? I think. As you can tell, I haven't got a flipping clue. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Great! Very nice. That's the gearbox. That can be added to the ship afterwards. Gearbox. And that one's going to be the 200 kilowatt aux generator. Aux generator. It is the generator, okay. So that's the generator. Yeah? I hope it's the generator. <laughs> the narrow bit is the flywheel. So that's the flywheel. Okay. That bit's the generator? <laughs> I 
hope so. Let's cut this out then. Uh, yeah, cool. Happy days. So what is the front bit? Is that just the motor that turns it? So for like simple to, that sounds really bad. For simple people terms, I take it. So that there makes the, that's the motor, which then turns the flywheel, that, which the energy then goes through into the generator, which then produces the electricity for the ship. I really should have gone to bloody mechanical engineering school, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I should have done this off camera, but oh well, it doesn't matter. We've had a laugh, we've had a joke, and this is all that we need, because we're all friends here, hopefully. Now the fat bit's the engine. Okay. So Wait, I am confused. So, okay, as it goes, right. Okay, got you, I've got you. Got ya, makes sense. Yeah, I really shouldn't have gone to, <laughs> I should have gone to a bloody mechanical engineering school. <laughs> oh, Christ. Uh, there. It's like that. India it. Cool. Uh, right. Let's bring that down to there. Do that. I'm gonna go bump, bump, and bump, bump. Cool. Right now that get brought up slightly. Then a wiggle. Then we're gonna go like that. Like that ish. Up we go. Wait, so it's literally just a triple, little baby triple expansion engine. That's all it is. Wow, my stream is slightly behind. Okay. Engine, crankshaft, flywheel, generator. I 
I do not know. I am literally doing random stuff. <laughs> I am making a random crap. It should technically be a dynamo because that's how you kind of produce the energy. When the ship can doesn't basically well, old fashioned TLF. <laughs> you lose your main engine and then you're kinda broken. Yeah the bit stuffed. Oh yeah. Yes stuffed. Right, okay, here we go. So I'm gonna guess that that in there needs to basically go to the size of a P. How is that too high? What is going on here? Unless... Zoop. Like that. And then we just go like this. Zoop. Like that, I think. And we just drag that all the way over there. To there. Bingo. That's gonna add that into the base unit. Looks like a very weird pond. Welcome back, James. I was asking you questions about stokery stuff. And then you disappeared. Had to go do the beer lift. I see. Well, James, I'm actually, um, I've got a drink in my hand, believe it or not. I know, very, very weird of me to have a drink in my hand, but yes, I do have a drink in my hand. on the old rum and coke. Who remembers the days of the uh, good old, how was it, the um, ah, so yeah, who remembers the days when I used to do a clear lower deck of all the subscribers muster on YouTube? Sorry, that was a bit throbbing. <laughs> that was very throbbing. <laughs> anyway, um, it was the day I said to Warfare, which then ended up on this. What was it? It was on Five Deck Dits, which was brilliant. Thanks, that guys. <laughs> Almost quit YouTube that day. <laughs> Clear lower deck with booze. Yeah, that was. Flip me. God, I remember that. That was. It felt painful, to say the least. <laughs> oh, God. I can't believe I did that. Oh, well. Amazing people laughed, didn't it? Oh. God, I wish I never did that ever again. <laughs> Double fire. <gasps> the worst thing was, was that the uh, senior warfare officer at the time, I think he was leaving, and I think he had, and he made a toast to the warfare department, and. Kind of became a, like a running joke, and then I got drunk. <laughs> oh, alcohol is the worst thing on the internet. It is bad. Don't ever do it. Because you end up looking like a tit. 
like me. <laughs> oh dear. Such fun. <laughs> Although, I think, from what I understand, the guy that does five deck did is a wafu. Of course. Oh, balls. So, yeah. Oops, a daisy. Uh, yeah. I'd like to have a drink at some point. Should we go back to Cardiff Bay again? <laughs> That's quality. <laughs> it's a good day. Okay, so now... I believe... Let's model it off that. So, let's go for that. Just to make sure it's the right size. What is the shape of that? That's a awkward shape. Cool. Right. Yeah, that is a very, very, very strange shape. So I guess it's that. But there. There? Because that's kind of what it looks like. It looks like an angle. Uh, probably need to drop that down to the right height. To there. Then I'm guessing... I am guessing here. Something like that. Bevel it out. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, let's turn that to two. No, hang on, that one. Yeah, it'll do. It will be alright. Uh, let's mirror that. Wait, what? The hell is wrong with that? Yeah, it slots in nicely. Then we just need that. That needs to go back. Needs to be brought back a bit more. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And how on earth is that? I don't understand this. It's something like that. Uh, 
And then you drop that back to there. And then you drag it that way. Like that. But then in here. Bitch, damn it. Hide. Here we go. Is something I, I will teach you from school. Boink. Sorted. Right, where's that random box thing? Doink, doink. Pew! Pew! No. Pew! There we go. Go. Now, last little thing is that random end bit. Um, James, what else do you think I can add to this before I decide to end the stream and basically go back to doing my weird ribs and not the chicken ribs or the beef ribs or the pork ribs? I don't know why I said chicken ribs. It sounds like a real thing, but... It evidently is not. Chicken rib. But then again, think about it, chicken rib combo is a thing, but it's not proper ribs. Because chickens don't have ribs that you can technically eat off. I want to say that that has got a curved edge. There we are. Or you should smooth that. Boom! Sorted. Auxiliary diesel generator. Let's mirror that. Nope. Let's take a mirror on that one. Um, yeah, I'm a chicken farmer. What are you saying about? <laughs> um, motor generators. I reckon that these things would be installed pretty much first. So it'd probably go boilers, that, that, barbette. With the handling room and all that jazz below. It's quite crazy to think that these ships were built in six months. They went from keel laying to six months later being commissioned. And off to see they went. So yeah. However, I do believe that my plans at about this point have gone slightly skewy, because there is a slight awkwardness with the plans. I don't think that's meant to be going that way. There we are. So, yeah. Oh, and I've also engaged the We're going to record with NVIDIA. Edit, set origin to 3D cursor. Oof, sword. Right.
Cool. How's that look? Little bits of machinery. Yep. Cool. How does this look? It's probably going to give me the entire bloody ship to try and render out now. Yep, it's going through the frames. Oh dear. Mm, you can see the funnel trunking. <laughs> Let's turn all those off. See how this looks. Without any of the frames. Oh wow, look at that. That is... Disappointing. Christ, can't believe I have to turn all these bloody things off. There we go. And let's see what it looks like now. There we are. There's your power plant. To be fair, it's not actually that bad. It's, I mean, very low poly bar the triple expansions, but it works. Not too bad. So, yeah. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna use that. That's good. Thanks, man. And there is that. We're gonna save that as scene. Now you're gonna see my amazing spelling skills. I can't spell for toffee. <laughs> oh dear. Let's see, that's going on Discord. Boom, sorted. Right, so. Now is the fun and games. It's time to join these two together. And let's pull that up. Oh no, 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 hang on. I'm not going into Discord yet. But I might do in a little bit. If I can't think of anything else to do. Uh, I need to go and see edit mode. Select all. How am I going to do this? It's probably best if I go for... Um, ba, 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 ba. UV unwrap with the Q projection. Um, try to think, how is this going to work? Obviously, well, that's the sides, which means I'm going to need to. Unless, let's just do this and go for that. 
obviously this is not going to give me the best thing. But I can use it. So let's go for... Scale that up to the right sizes. Select all UV, export to UV layer. We're going to go for boiler base UV, export the layer. Give that a cheeky little save. And we are going to load up the good old fashioned GIMP. Good old GIMP. I think we should also UV unwrap that as well. So I believe at one stage, you know, should we just keep it? Would it be? Cool. I'm guessing it would be black to that point there. Upwards of that, it would be pus as grey, with the internals being obviously black from all the smoke and crap that comes out of the boilers. Yeah, we'll go for that. Okay, so UV unwrap. Cool, UV unwrap for that. So that's going to be. Uh, let's get that one. Export UV layout. This is going to be the. Uh, yeah, funnel trunking. <laughs> Alright. Sounds cool. Close that down. Uh, do, 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 do. Where are we? Royal Navy, pre 45. Monitors, Abercrombie, base hull. Then where are we looking at? Where are we looking at? Funnel trunken, open with Jimp or Gimp. Maybe you can call it GIMP, but we'll call it GIMP. Like the GIMPY, the uh, general purpose machine gun. We'll go for that. Right, so let's new layer. It's going to go for funnel trunking. That's the wrong way around. From the trunk and textures. Now, give me one second while I go and Google something. Uh, sovereign hobbies. Uh, color schemes. No, it's good. Shop RN. Yeah, that's fine. Blah, 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 da, 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 da. I have a sneaky suspicion I might not. Ooh, hello. Modern day Passer Grey. <gasps> yes, I like it. Okay, happy days. So you can buy modern day Passer Grey paint. It's good to know. Uh, bum bum bum. So look, there isn't one. So, funnel chunking on an RN warship is grey. However, I've got six suspicion it might be just, yeah. 
that color. And then what we'll then do is, where is it? That one. Go from here. I know it's not the world's most sophisticated. Actually, do you know what? Better idea. Where is it? Where is it? Done. Also, you need to have a slight variation in the color. So I'll sleep. It's not gonna be the most like basic of single colors. It's a little bit more than that. There are slight variations in color. There is slight little bits and bobs here and there. Slight specks of dust that's going to get into the way of things. Welcome to how I do my texturing. Right, let's add a tiny bit more so they take that to 10. I'm going to go for our ethnicity of that. Build up the colors slightly. And then we're just going to add. Probably bring that to six. Hey, your base just build it up. Let's go to 7.5. Basically, make it randomish, and then go for something else like. Oh, I don't know. Charcoal. There we are. Export that as the funnel trunking. Then what we're going to do is going to load in the funnel trunking. Go to here. And probably best we do that. Go to funnel trunking. Assign. There we are. Obviously. When you look at it this way, doesn't look great. What you then do let's do that. Then you go to export. Oh, just like that, basically. And then you bring it to the right size. Like so. Also, those side bits need to be brought inwards. Right, like that. Now we did technically do the same thing with the uh, boilers. Because the boilers would technically come as obviously different, the same shade 
as the upper work, upper funnel trunking. So let's go to funnel trunking. Nope. Why have I got wire textures in this? I shouldn't have wire textures. Um, the funnel trunking. What was the color on that trunking? Let's make that a funnel trunking color. Oh, yeah. Bring that to there. Funnel trunking color. See, have the same issue there. What we'll then do is on this side, get rid of the triple expansions. Don't need them. Like that. And then we're going to go there. Saw it. Then go. Yum. Groovy. Cool. That looks good. Right, and that piece of machinery there. I've got a secret suspicion that this might go past as grey. Must go past as grey. Where is the whole plan? Obviously, this is not the exact whole plan. Okay. So with the whole plan, it's literally just the basic color. I'm gonna then take it through a different set system to make it the right color it needs to be. Boom, sorted. That can also just go bloody passes gray. Cool. Happy days. Now, that, that's pretty much it. So let's look at what that looks like. Uh, with that one, you want to up the, it needs to be very metallic. Roughness needs to be built up. So it's like a dark, dark black. Okay. How are we looking? That's how it would look with the normal lighting. Very basic, very dark. Pop that open. Uh, let's turn that off. Go to the rendered settings. See what it looks like with the actual colors on it. <sighs> to be fair, that does actually look not bad. I like that. Looks good. How long have we been going for? Two hours, 45 minutes and five seconds on the stream I'm looking at right now. So, that looks good. All the images I save are in 4K. So, yeah, obviously needs a little bit more work but as literally as as built looks good obviously after a little bit of a while you then have rust well you have the very minor rust on the inside but on the outside you'll have a lot more rust so machinery with color 
Does it really? <laughs> Christ. Okay. Cool. Now, my triple expansion engines. Ah, that's why. That's why it's got um, weird ass colours. Okay, so. What's material zero one? Make that black. God, don't do that, James. What's not going purple? Why are things not going purple? I don't see anything going purple, so why? Actually, hang on, that might be an easier idea if I just do this. Open that up. I regret that every single life decision I've ever made now. <laughs> Top tip. Oh, really? That? Flip it, L. Oh, shoot. Okay. Right. <gasps> oh, dear me. I'm going to guess that the base was green. It's like a weird pus of green. Give me the green. Um, sovereign hobbies. Color schemes. British RN. Gonna use the green, the dark green deck color. Uh, let's go for my snipping tool. But I'm glad that if I'm getting P if you're getting PTSD from this, James, I think I'm doing something right. Save image as. Uh, Why is the Alvan class got a white ensign in it? Okay. I mean, I don't want. I wouldn't mind the RN having a Alvans class or all the Alvans, but I don't think I should have it with the white ensign. Bear with. Just give me one second. I'm just get bringing in the green. Uh, do do do. Monitors. Abba. Right. Let's go. Green. Let's go for the let's call it the deck. Green color. Right. So let's load up the deck green. Um green David. Question. Do I get copyright striked if I literally say that? Hmm. Interesting. Bloody well, hope not. Okay, so. There. Fee tanks. And all the rest of that is green. That's actually a really nice green. That is really nice. I like that. Oh, look, it's even got triple expansion engine on it, and the person who made it. There we are. Let's give credits for the amazing triple expansion engine to this guy. I haven't got a Scooby Doo what it says. Okay. Time to go back through and do the next color. I'm gonna get a full-on picture, and I'll send it to Drac. 
And they were like, this is the machinery layout of an Abercrombie class monitor. Yeah, no, Drac actually might be watching this. That'd be quite cool. If it is, oh, if Drac is watching this, I would literally lose my mind. I think I will drink my entire rum and coke right here, right now. And that'd be amazing. But like a little schoolboy. It is a very basic engine, but it's done very well. What's the kind of brass? Um, uh, I don't want to go green. It's like it's like there, but you go slightly darker, and you up the metallic. That is a triple expansion engine, James. How does that look? You kind of need a more brass colour, don't you? Um, well, with this one, image texture open. Where did I stick my Cheers, Ben. I mean, I can't take all the credit for this engine. What I can take credit is for colouring it in. I'm like a big schoolboy. Colouring things in. Yeah, it is a bit. Funny enough, I actually have a brass texture by here. Boof. Actually thinking about it. That doesn't look great. So I said what I could probably do is just extend that image. No. Clip. Nope. Extend. Spherical. Nope. Oh bloody hell. Uh, you has on sphere in it. Tube. It's not a tube. Uh, box. Um, smart. Let's go smart. Nope. Valid it. Linear. Box. Oh shoot, don't go in there. That's not where you want to go. Uh, okay. No! Bad it, bad it. Bring back the brass. Because I technically also need it for um, the propellers. Because the propellers were brass? Bronze? I think they're brass. But well, they're a bronzy, brassy colour. Uh, okay, give me a second. Uh, that one? Uh, 
no. What the hell is that under? Oh shoot. Um RGB curves? No. I have well and truly buggered that up. Actually, question, does Sovereign Paints have brass? Give me a minute. I might be able to fix this. One hopes. Victorian era buff, that's actually a really nice color I need to use that for. Victorian era ships, but give me the Ooh Georgian era buff. Oh, good good little colour. Where oh where is the propeller colour? Sod it, would you use Titanic? Uh bum, 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 bum. Canvas wooden decks, white star buff, black hull. It's kinda of not black though, is it? Nope. Why can't I buy or why can't I find basic colours? There we are. Give me Propeller colours. Nope. That's the wrong one. Let's just type in brass colour. There we are. Uh, you didn't see anything. Don't look at what I found. <laughs> Actually, yeah, don't, definitely don't look at what I just found. <laughs> it's all good, it's all fine, don't worry. I haven't found random dodgy stuff on the internet. I've got my driving licenses on there. Awkward. Okay, so that that one can remain back to pink. Wait, hang on, hang on. Oh, I see. Interesting. Okay, so that needs to get a brass. Okay, which one is it? We're gonna make that into brass. Brass color. Funnel green, there we go. It's that one. It's about the purple. There we go. What we're gonna do is turn the metallic up to 700. 0 0.700. Oh dear. And then that one. Bring that to 0 0.7, roughness to 0 0.7. This is where it gets fun. Zero point seven. Oh. Okay. Next one. What goes pink? Oh, Jesus! I think we need to bring out that colour. Or we just bring out the brass. Brass is probably the best thing for it. Um, yeah, that looks much better.
Then what we'll then do, for the parts of the crank that go around, is that the right words, James? For the, yeah, it must be. For the crankshaft and the crank bits and bobs, we will just make that into a silvery like color and then just make it very metallic because it's meant to be shiny. Christ, that's a little bit behind. Okay. Which one of these is going? The random shade of blue. And blue depth. Ah. The internals of the crank. Got ya, right. So now we need to go for white. With a slight hint of that. Uh. Pew! Okay, let's make it darker. Metallic, up. Roughness, down. Specular, a little bit like that. I'm going to make that into shiny, shiny, flip my life, uh, I-N-E-Y, metal, like that, shiny, what's this one, let's make you green, actually that's probably a bad idea, don't make it green, even if it is like lime green. Oh, doesn't that look good? That looks really nice, actually. But it looks to be all the bolts. Let's make you shiny metal. Shiny metal. Pew. Once it decides to load. Actually, my laptop's not doing that badly tonight. The uh, the heat extractor is going, so it's good to see. Right, what can we change into purple? Ah, the supports for the like a shiny. Mmm, shiny. Shiny what it is. Give me some shiny textures. Oh. Hello. Um, let's make that green. No. Would it be that? Um, let's make it green. It's the only thing I can think of that you can actually use as a color. Where was that green I used on here? Um, um green da ba dee da ba da. <laughs> Ooh, look at those. Those should be brass. Definitely must be brass. If you, hopefully you agree. Get rid of that. Okay, next one. Yum. Ooh, the screws. Uh, let's go for shit. 
Tiny. Although I'm pretty sure these are going to be normal hull colored passes gray. Then again, this is wartime. So they're not really going to be going around trying to make everything the same well, color. Ooh, excellent. Where's my shiny? Shiny! That's what I like to see. It's a really nice model, actually. It's such a good, nice, good model. Come on. That's shiny as well. Obviously, there's a little bit of grease to it. Because I don't think I'm going to get the proper, like, shiny metal colour. Right, what are you? You're the other bits. Shiny! I think once I've coloured this in, I'm going to call it there for the evening. Once this is all in place. Cool, there's that done. The last couple of bits. Can't tell what's being coloured differently, so let's go to the purple. What has changed? Can anyone see what's randomly changed to purple? It's under there. I think that's whack the colour up. Ditch the plants, we don't need them. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I can't see anything. Hmm. Okay, that's strange. But not to worry. If any instance, we'll just go to shiny, shiny metal. We'll go from there. So yeah. Fish, yep, good. Got 
A few more textures to go. I saw something change. Ah. The upper piping. That can go to brass. There we are. Next one. God awful color of purple. I think I'll get a shiny. Just because I know for a fact I have seen stuff on board ships that is like brass on one side, normal colour on the other side, and there's that buffer in between which is like a different colour. I wonder what that colour there is. Oh, it's shiny. Okay. Come on, laptop. Don't die on me tonight. You can make it. We can make it if we really want. Make it brass. There we are. That's brass on the bottom, good. There we are. If we're gonna do this properly, we gotta do it properly. Ish. Well, I've almost finished my third rum and coke, and that's my last rum and coke for this evening. Oh dear, Let's press the wrong button. Balls. <sighs> well, that's quite annoying. Bring it back in. There's only a couple more bits and pieces we need to close down. Sort out these last couple of colours. Okay, so it's the supporting joint there, which can go to green, which I'm happy with. Next one is this one. Is that those pipes? Um, I feel like these are going to be shiny. Shiny metal. Yeah. Looks good. Okay. These ones, I am pretty sure, 
would be brass too. Oh, look at that! I thought it was going to be those ones. Brass. And hopefully, last one. Yeah. It's going to be brass too. Excellent. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That is it. Engines colored. Boilers colored. Let's have a one last fault. I can already tell my laptop is getting hot now. <laughs> I can feel it slowing down slowly. Which is not good. But that does look good. That looks very good, actually. So what's everyone's opinion on the colours and stuff? Do we like them? All good? That does look really good. I like that a lot. Right, where's Daddy Drac? I know, right? It's quite cool. times um bear with one second just sending them over to Drac for his video and Two times low poly um, AC uh, two hundred kilowatt. There we are. There we are. The man himself has got the power plant. Obviously there's going to be more piping, more cabling coming out of these, but obviously I wouldn't be able to tell you that because I haven't got Scooby-Doo where they go. But needless to say, I feel like we have got a very, very good placement. Well, I feel like we got to a good place with this. They look good, they feel good, and quite honestly, I'm happy with those. Just, you know, shame needs some more uh, 
Fire. <laughs> Need some more fire. But yeah, they're, they're good. Let's chop that off. Let's see what it looks like with the hull. It does feel very much like very aft, doesn't it? But yeah, that looks good. That's quite neat. Oh, it's good. Right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am going to call it there tonight. Thank you very much, everyone who's come along. Uh, all 121 views tonight, that is epic. Thank you very much. Uh, how many likes have we got? 15. Before you all go, if you haven't done so, could you drop this a like, please? Just so the, you know, stupid bloody YouTube algorithm goes, ooh, look, there's a multiple liked video. Let's project it to people. You know, this is what we have to deal with. <laughs> but, yeah. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you all to actually keep, you know, we're making conversation. It's nice to actually hold a conversation with people. Obviously, it kind of dropped off at the end. Um, but, you know, I do like the constant talking. Constant conversation is always good. That's what I like to see. So, yeah. I'm going to go and uh, try and finish episode 3 slash 4 of the building series. Of doing the bloody inter internal... Uh, ribs because <laughs> yeah this is how far I've got I'm going to manually go through and, and slightly bring these in because I've done it quite properly and look at that that's how it all fits into place it's all cool groovy obviously these kind of stick into the deck but don't worry about that bit don't need to worry about it yeah, it just looks good, doesn't it? Obviously, need to cut this bit out. But this is the good thing about doing this. Because once all of this is now in place, I can then start doing the internal bulkheads, which we then can do something called deck plans. <gasps> Could you imagine that? Deck plans. Proper three-dimensional deck plans for this ship. I've got... Mess... Uh, mess desks, no not mess desks mess tables I've got um, I've got hammocks I've got obviously the engines I've got, got the uh, boilers, got the auxiliary D crap, no don't you dare <laughs> I've got the emergent I've got the ex the auxiliary generators in place I've got the 14 inch 45 caliber guns from America which is the ones are the same on Texas. I've got three pounders ready to go. I've got the 12 pounders ready to go. I've got a couple of boats ready to go. I've got quite a bit ready to go, which is good. Now, I'm going to leave you all to it. Have a lovely evening, all. If it's the morning in America, happy days wouldn't be a morning in America, it'd be morning in Australia and New Zealand. But wherever you are in the world, have a good rest of your day. Hopefully it's good. That's English. <laughs> oh, can't believe it was my first language and I can't even speak English. Flip me. Right. Yeah, I'm off. Good night all. <laughs>